Hello, I'm sitting in my uh, C64 corner here where I've tried to set up the C64 with this monitor and just like trying to have a setup that's usable and easy to easy to do stuff. I thought we would just have a look at a couple of things here. So first of all, this C64C, which I bought a while ago and I was going to make a dedicated video, but I think this is going to be that dedicated video. As you can see, it came in a box and the box looks amazing for being that old and the computer itself, it looks brand new. And I also have the Commodore 1084S here, which is my friend's, but I'm borrowing that safe for safekeeping. I fixed the lid on this one, which you can check out in my video about that. I'll try and remember to, to link that up in the corner. So it's starting to become a pretty decent setup. And as you can see, I even 3D printed this uh, cartridge holder for my Kung Fu Flash and my C64 dead test. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'll try and show this off maybe. I'll quickly go through how I designed the cartridge holder in Fusion 360. I didn't record the whole process, but I can I can show you how show you step by step how I did it. It's very easy. Uh, I started out with this um, sketch of the profile. So you can see the outline of the holder and also the the trays um, for the cartridges itself. I tried having the cartridges at uh, different heights so they would show even better like from the front so you could see the labels. But it just adds a lot to the uh, print time and um, it's just wasteful to be honest. Next I just extruded the profile. Then I made a new sketch to just add a few millimeters to the sides. Just to add like a, uh, to add a wall. So I just extruded that. And um, there we go, easy enough. And then I added a, uh, a fillet at the end. Yeah, just to the corners to make it look a little bit cleaner, nicer. That's basically it. I had some filament that matches pretty decent to the C64. Let's turn the C64 on so you can see it in in action. As you can see, it works perfectly, and the video output on this one is so much better than my Breadbin C64. The signal is just way, way, way cleaner. 
Before we continue, I just wanted to show something on this uh, C64C box. This is the back side, and as you can see, it says MOS 8510 microprocessor. And I have been researching that, and I cannot find any 8510 microprocessor. So I think that's just a typo. Now, the original C64 is obviously a 6510, so maybe they just confused those two, 8510 and 6510. But there's also a variant that's called 8500, which is a variant of the 6510. So I think they just obviously, I guess they just mixed both of them and it became 8510 on the box. This box really does, uh, I mean, it obviously has some, some stuff, but for the age it really looks nice. It's kind of heavy because I have the original power supply inside here. So, um, I know it's bad, but I'm currently using the Breadbin C64 PSU on this C64C, which is, that's fine, but you shouldn't be using those old ones uh, at all. Um, and I've actually just ordered a replacement PSU, so that will also go into this setup when I'm done. This is the rest of the box, just shows off a monitor, disk drive, and a printer. And then you just have the different specifications in different languages. So I'm pretty happy with this whole setup, except that power socket thingy behind the monitor there. I drilled a hole in the back corner, which is okay. Um, and I just used the socket that I had on hand and put it through the hole, put it behind the monitor, but it shows just shows too much. But I did have the foresight to actually check online to see if I could find some pop-up socket thingies and that is this one right here so I think we should mount this and improve this setup a little bit more so this is the current situation I drilled out this uh, this hole so we'll continue with this, we'll open this and hopefully it fits the hole as it's supposed to do Now, the thing is that this is plugged underneath the desk and, well, under the desks I have uh, a lot of shelves. I need to I need to drag this out to be able to, to get to the socket underneath and remove the old power outlets and uh, insert a new pop-up one. Okay, I've pulled out the, the shelves. Well, enough to get to the actual socket behind her, anyway. Let's try and open this without cutting ourselves on the knife or the plastic. And I just cut myself. Nice. Okay, so this is how it looks. I don't know, hopefully it's uh, decent quality. It's not a very expensive model. Just screw this loose and put it through the, the hole and then just tighten this up against the underside easy enough it doesn't look too bad, I'm just gonna screw on the, the thing underneath Do that with one hand. Okay, let's see. Put it all the way in the corner. Should be pretty nice and tight. This whole thing is kind of flimsy, but. Okay, well, all the wires are just crammed in behind there to be honest, but it does already look better than it did before. So, I'll 
call that a success, I guess. It would be nice if it had a power switch, so I could just easily turn off the whole thing. So I might have to get like a... Uh, I use IKEA, trop free. I don't know if you can see it, but it's this uh, controllable uh, outlets. So I think maybe I would have to install one of them underneath the desk. Anyway, let me get under the bench and insert the power. And uh, we'll see what happens. There we go. We got power. It's not too bad. It's looking pretty good actually. I like it. Please like and subscribe. Yes! So then I actually hooked that up to one of those IKEA controllable outlets. And including, <laughs> including my light. Unfortunately, so that's gonna turn on as well. It's kind of dark here, but let's just give this a go Sweet It's been a few days since I recorded the other parts of this video But my uh, replacement PSU actually showed up So that's nice. I can put it in the video um, I went with the Keylog one, which I think looks nice. I ordered the black one with the OLED display, and I got the one with a Commodore 64 um, plug, and also a um, an extra plug for the uh, the disk drive, the 1541 disk drive. So now that I have this new PSU, I can easily power both the C64 and the disk drive from the same PSU. So I'll have to get that out of storage and um, give it a good test. I think that's going to be one more episode in my C64 repair series. Because I'm pretty sure that this drive has some, um, has some issues. Which I hopefully can fix. Anyway, let's have a look at this... Uh, power supply. I've just taken it out so I can show you easily but I have to tidy up this whole whole setup a little bit. But as you can see it has uh, two cables so there's one for the C64 and one for the disk drive and it has this nice OLED display with a voltage readout for the 5 volts and the 12 volts so now I don't have to be be scared of my old PSU failing and destroying my machines it looks pretty good. That'll be the end of this video. I'm very happy with how this whole setup turned out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.